creating a scene. Anytime there's like a camera and people. Joking. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, I forgot the first, the first one. You good? Oh, she's always ready. All right, so this is where the magic happens. <laughs> We're here in Boston at Iconic Mike's Pastry. I'm here with Brad Marchand of the Boston Bruins, one of the best pastry shops and special yes. locations in the city of Boston. So let's go in, Brad, and I know on the ice, you have a pension nice. for tasting things, so we want to do taste things <laughs> inside, too. A lot of good tasty things in here. Brad Marchand certainly likes to get under the skin and sometimes close to the skin of his opponents. We're gonna have to get you to lick one of these guys. This is what your tongue is supposed to be used for, Brad. Is that it? Yes. I just, I can't turn it off when I turn it on. <laughs> Brad Marchand, you're not going to find a guy who's more competitive than this guy in the National Hockey League. You play with such a unique style in the sense that you've got a bit of an edge. You, everybody hates playing against you, but they love having you on the team. Talk to me about where you get that edge and why you play that way. It, it really stems from my childhood. and that, that was kind of the way that everyone played growing up where I, where I came from. And, um, everyone kind of had that edge, and, and if you didn't have it, then you uh, really weren't able to play. And I, I think it just kind of stuck with me. That allowed me to kind of get my foot in the door and draw some penalties and uh, create that energy, and then I just kind of went up from there. They score! How about Brad Marchand? We are here outside of Gibson Steakhouse, one of the most iconic steakhouses in the United States, and certainly one of the best here in Chicago. What would you say hurts more? Is it the wind chill in February and January or getting a hip check in a game? I do not like the wind. I don't. I like the cold, believe it or not, but I do not like the wind. And uh, I've been fortunate enough to not get hip checked too, too often <laughs> so far. Did you always know that you wanted to be a hockey player? Uh, I think my dad brainwashed me a little bit. <laughs> he was a hockey nut. He'd be telling me stories, telling me you know, I was getting drafted by the Montreal Canadiens and things like that. So I always wanted to be a hockey player since I was a kid. I was a Bruins fan. It was always Cam Neely when I was playing forward and Ray Bork if I was a defenseman. Team Bork for Keith. Keith the shot scores! We are here in Manhattan at Bluestone Lane with Mika Zibanejad of the New York Rangers. Kind of a local spot for you, Mika. You like yeah. to come here? Yeah, it's um, it's nice to grab a coffee uh, every once in a while. And it's a nice atmosphere here and yeah. nice people working here, so it's good. So what do you like to do on your days off in New York? I know you're into music, but what other places have you visited? Uh, I've been to a couple of basketball games and, and some concert yeah. industry, so uh, I'll probably keep myself busy that way. So New York City, a great place to make music. So let's head up to your place and check out your music digs and your DJing skills. You can right. Show me a couple moves. Let's do this. <laughs> this is where I sit, and I just basically just press a few buttons, and I hope it sounds good. So opening night, the Rangers come to you. Tell me yeah. the story. It's it's a month before the season. Yeah, it's a month before, before the season, and tell me that uh, you know, are you interested in doing the player introduction song and. Um, I go, yeah, absolutely. I'm like, well, what do you guys want, basically? No pressure. Three weeks, yeah. four weeks before no. the season. You're yeah. only in training camp. That's now you've why. got to put together the sound that's going to be throughout Madison Square Garden on opening night for all yeah. your teammates. Yes, no big is. deal. Was this opening night? Yeah. What was it like for you to hear your own song at Madison Square Garden? It was really weird. Yeah, that's pretty cool. We are here at Yankee Stadium, one of the most iconic venues in the world. And I'm joined by Islanders captain Anders Lee. You were an outstanding athlete in high school, in particular quarterback. I always joked about uh, wanting to join the football team, but I don't think I would have handled it. You, you were recruited by other schools, though, right, to play football? Yeah, I had a few other opportunities. But for me, once I had a chance to visit Notre Dame uh, with the hockey team and had a chance to go there, uh, it was kind of a no-brainer. Now the fighting average back across the line. Buck is knocked down. A chance here for Lee scores! Under sleeve, backed him off the goaltender, Stolars. You are one of the captains in this great city of New York. What does it mean to you to wear that C on your sweater every night? One of the biggest honors I've ever been given, and uh, you know, kind of seeing that on my jersey when I walk in for a game, it uh, still hits me like it's brand new. And just so many good leaders I've had the chance to learn from throughout the years that uh, things have gone really well so far. Bailey to the front, Anders Lee, and he scores! The first as the captain for Anders Lee. I wanted to take you skating in Bryant Park. This is my first time skating in New York outside of Madison Square Garden. Oh, sorry. <laughs> like, I'm nervous right now. It's OK. I, could, I, I do this for a living. What do you think of the little Ranger fan here? Do you like the Vegas Golden Knights? 
So how does it feel to skate on your first outdoor rink in New York City? Yeah, you know what? There's a lot more people than what I'm used to. <laughs> you can check this off the list. And this is on my bucket list. Nice. Skate at a rink in New York City. <laughs> Captain's tap in. I made the bucket list. So I have one skate that's really sharp and one that's you can like tell. I can't tell. Like this this one's really, really dull and this one's really sharp. <laughs> that's awesome. That's why I was gonna say I'm gonna start just going like this. <laughs> <laughs> you have to have hot chocolate, and I mean, have you ever seen a hot chocolate like this before? It's actually in a donut. Can I smell it? Yes. <laughs> I mean, do you like just eat it? Yeah, just dig in. Mm. <laughs> Pretty ridiculous, right? They win, <laughs> but I'm just gonna. <laughs> I'm here with Connor Hellebuck in beautiful Winnipeg with Tinley, his dog of two years. He's ready to run. There we go. I know you like to fish. You like to golf. <laughs> yeah. What, what other activities do you like to do? Well, you know, once the ice freezes, the ice fishing up here is really good. Oh. I'm like Winnipeg and catch some good walleye. Do you take any of your game. teammates with you? or? Uh, well, Buff was the one who showed me how, and that's why I have okay. my helmet nice. here. Um, he showed me the, the ropes of it, and I loved it the first time. I went back, and then I caught a big walleye, and then I was hooked. You go to school at UMass Lowell. And then you come here, what is the biggest difference, would you say, between this city versus where you grew up? Um, the fans are crazy, which is a great thing. Um, it's loud and you definitely get noticed and, you know, it's, it's a good community. Last year in the playoffs, had you ever seen anything like that with the atmosphere and the fans and what everybody was doing to rally around you guys? Uh, this is going to pain you to say. <laughs> no, I'm not too bad. Even living in Boston for the years you played at UMass Lowell, you know how crazy those fans are. Yeah, and coming from Hockey Town, I want to say something like that, but no, that's just crazy. The whole fan base wanted to be part of it any possible way they could. The Jets with a dominating performance, 5 nothing winners, and they will soar into the second round, riding a jet stream of confidence. Last year at the American Century Championship in Tahoe, you came pretty darn close, Joe, to winning it all. We were coming down the stretch, and you know, on 18, we needed Eagle, and we're in a good position, and hit a good approach shot that hits the flag sick. And... Wow. He has an excellent look at Eagle. Sounds like he should make it. And... Now you know his heart is pumping for Eagle. I ended up missing it, so if it would have forced a playoff, it would have been something, you know, pretty cool to play in that playoff. The 17th hole in Tahoe. That is one of the most entertaining holes in all of golf. It's usually a long wait on 16, too, so it, it's starting to build up. And just as you get closer and closer to 17, the music, the party's starting. And the best part, it's got to be the beach. You know, there's four or five boats deep, and the party's going on. It's pretty cool. Well, we brought you here because we think you need to work on your game a little bit, you know? Can't work on it enough. <laughs> Can you compare the similarities, the hand-eye coordination with golf and hockey? You know, the connection between the stick and ball helps a little bit in the hand-eye, but it's easier to tip that puck that's moving than that ball that's just really? sitting there sometimes. All right, so we're going to play Pictionary. Go. Go. Uh, pizza. Ah, uh, that's not good. <laughs> that's not good. <laughs> I thought this would have been an easy one. <laughs> All right, we're gonna bring in the fishbowl. This is a whole conglomeration of questions for you that you're gonna pick out. Okay. You're offered a trip to the moon. Do you take it and why? <laughs> Are you allowed to take anybody with you? If I could go with somebody, then I might take it. The more I think about it, yeah, I'd have to go with me. Who is your first big crush and what did you do about it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. This girl I grew up with, we had the same homeroom class. I kind of just walked up behind her and said, Would you like to go out with me? What did she say? And she said yes, and I was super excited. Long lasted, couple week relationship. What grade is this? Like uh, seventh grade? I love it. You gave her the old tap on the shoulder. Nice. There you go. This is unbelievable. This is the first question. First question. So imagine what else is in this. If I were a professional hockey player, I would be what? I would love to be an actor, like a Broadway show. I think it's I so cool. I think you'd be I really good at stuff. it. Yeah. Otherwise, I'd love to be a baseball player. Okay. I mean, I've loved baseball all my life. I 
don't know, maybe something to do with animals. <laughs> What embarrasses you the most in front of other people? I don't like things in my teeth either. They happen, uh, you know, if you have dinner and like when someone tell me, I yeah, had, you need you know, the friend to tell you. Piece of broccoli in my <laughs> teeth or something. It's, Who's the guy on the team that would tell you something like that? Burns you tell me. Yeah. And I'd have to tell him he's got yeah. something in his too. Well, he doesn't have any teeth yeah, to have anything in. <laughs> he'd still have something in there. <laughs> okay, so place on forehead. Okay, the greatest hockey movie of all time. Uh, miracle? No, a uh, second greatest. Funny glasses, big guys. Uh, slap shot. Yeah. Your former team? The uh, Washington Capitals. <laughs> Wild Bill. Carlson. Yes. Oh, the most famous celebrity in Vegas. Like, um, iconic, uh, entertainer, celebrity, oh dark hair. Wayne Newton. Yes. You eat it a lot here in New England. It's creamy. Clam chowder. Yeah. Oh, God. Jesus. <laughs> famous incident with you and this player. Licking. Yes, but who was it? Callahan. Yeah. <laughs> um, you've had a lot of these. Suspensions. No, or cat tricks. What's another name for Cody Hatch? Yeah. You don't get along with some of these guys in the league. Everybody. Yeah. <laughs>